So that's a no. This needs to go. You should burn this one. Okay. Because the point of that sharp was to show off your bones, that your bones were sticking out. That was the reason why you wanted that shirt, was to show off your, just, just to have your ribs sticking out, and that wasn't okay. It's kind of cute. Yeah, Dad, you just bought me that. I'm going to keep that if that's... The point. The point is, you got told what you weigh, and you had a breakdown, so let's not talk about sizes. But this one will go out. Where do you want me to put the stuff? In here. And why these? These are big. Thanks. They don't fit me. I thought these are the jeans that you said Daddy got you that are too big on you. Are they from American Apparel? Yes. Those are not them. These are tiny. I know they're tiny. You don't want to give them to a friend. I want to burn them. I got these pants when I was at my lowest weight, when I was at my sickest, and they have a lot of bad memories attached to them, and I've also accepted that there's no way that I'm ever going to be able to wear these pants while I'm healthy, and I'm never, ever going to let myself get to a place where I'm able to wear these pants, so I don't need them anymore. There are a lot of misconceptions about how eating disorders develop. Most people think that their diet's gone wrong or that they're for attention, um, when in reality, Eating disorders serve as maladaptive coping mechanisms for other psychiatric illnesses that people are suffering from. Uh, I don't think that I've ever met anybody with an eating disorder that doesn't have some sort of other diagnosis, whether it be an anxiety diagnosis, an obsessive compulsive diagnosis, PTSD, even learning disabilities like ADHD. Um, people use eating disorders as a way to cope with the realities of the other illnesses that they're either getting treatment for or they aren't. And that's what makes eating disorders so difficult to treat is because they're so ingrained within what a person is, you know. They are part of your identity. So an eating disorder can develop based on uh, genetic vulnerabilities as well as how you grew up, who raised you, factors like that. It's not something that's taught, it's something that's developed because it serves a purpose. Um, the function of an eating disorder is different for every person in that it's individual and what it does for them, but they all do the same thing generally, which is that they help the person cope with the outside world. I don't even know where it is. Let me ask. Okay. This is Ensure Plus, which has 350 calories, and it's what they make you drink when you're on weight gain. It says to help gain or maintain a healthy weight. Well, the original has less calories. It has 100 less calories. No, it actually has 130 less calories. So when you're in hospitals and you need to gain weight, they make you drink the Plus normally, but it tastes a lot worse because it, it's the same volume, it's the same amount of liquid, but it's just more calories and more chemicals basically so it tastes a lot worse this is like the original which is what I drink now I don't drink vanilla because it's gross but um, it's I wouldn't say that it's good it's not good but it's necessary uh, I want to explain that I, I drink it with a straw because it has a very distinct odor um, not the most delicious odor but uh, this sound the uh, finished my Enshore sound is music to my ears. It's my favorite sound in the world. I wish it could be my ringtone. <laughs> it's like a whole different type of weighing something. It's like incredibly healthy. Okay, I feel like 
I need two pounds of kale, so I'm gonna get more. My eating disorder gives me a physical rush, um, as well as an emotional one. It makes me feel good about myself, and um, I found that with eating disorders, the cycle is that you will either do a behavior, let's say, for example, vomiting, and there will be two reactions. You'll either feel shame about it and you'll find the need to hide it, or you'll feel pride about it and you'll want to continue it, so you'll find the need to hide it. You'll keep doing it because you think that nobody has noticed, so therefore it's not a big deal. And it just continues over and over and over until either you get treatment or you die, which is what makes eating disorder so difficult to treat is that the nature of the disorder is to hide it. So for me, the eating disorder was something that I could completely encompass myself in. It became my hobby, my passion, you know, hiding these behaviors, hiding the ways that I was coping with the world be became my way to cope with the world. The important thing to remember about eating disorders is that it's never really about the food. It's always about the control that the food gives you, like being able to dictate what goes into your body, what doesn't go into your body. In finding control with your relationship with food, you're able to make up for the lack of control you feel in other parts of your life. These are Boca burgers, which are what they give you, like, in the hospital that I was in, if you were a vegetarian and you didn't eat meat, they would give you this as a meat substitute, but they're not awesome. <laughs> but a lot of people's vegetarianism does feed into their eating disorder, so I was vegetarian for the majority of my life, but I've started recently experimenting with eating meat just to test to see whether or not it's a disordered aspect of my life because I want to make sure that I'm not leaving any sort of behaviors behind. I want to just get the whole thing finished with, even if eating meat makes me uncomfortable at times. As much as my vegetarianism was didn't originate in an eating disorder way, I think it definitely is possible that it has become incorporated in my disorder, which is why I'm experimenting with meat. Having an eating disorder is exhausting. It's the only word I can use to describe it, it's, it's physically exhausting, obviously. No matter what eating disorder you have, it's gonna affect your body. Um, and it's just, it's so emotionally taxing and painful. It causes you to feel such intense shame and hatred for yourself, but also such intense pride in what you're doing at times that you're living in this constant emotional conflict with yourself. And then there's just the element that what you're doing is just something that your body biologically is trained to avoid. And it's, it's a civil war to be fighting against yourself. And you're, either way, nobody's gonna win. So when you have an eating disorder, it's like fighting a losing battle all the time. This is more emotional than I thought it was going to be. I wore these pants for 14 days when I was in the hospital. It's not exactly the cleanest thing I've ever done. But they were the only pants I had that were small enough. to fit me at the time. When you're in the recovery process, you have to second guess every single choice that you make. You can't quit food cold turkey because that would be a behavior. You have to learn how to reincorporate food and exercise back into your life in a healthy way. And most people don't really understand or realize how many of their decisions are based off of food and exercise. If I go to order a coffee, I have to consider why I'm getting the coffee that I'm getting. I have to consider if I'm getting it because I know it has more or less calories than something else. And 
when I'm putting milk in my coffee, I have to decide if I'm putting 1% because I'm not really feeling half and half today or because I know half and half has more calories. I have to consider whether or not taking the stairs is disordered or not. And it's a balance game and you're gonna make the wrong decision and you're gonna mess up. But what's important is to do the next right thing for your recovery because you can't go back. So a day inside of my head consists of questioning myself at every turn, being able to recognize my mistakes and my successes, and being able to accept and learn from them. What do I think about recovery? Um, recovery is an incredibly difficult process. Uh, it depends on the day. I'm at a place right now where I can stop doing eating disorder behaviors. I can eat what I have to eat. I can keep it down. I can exercise in a healthy way and I can function, but I can't stop my thoughts. I can't stop the desires um, to do behaviors. So recovery for me means being able to live a life without the distortion that the eating disorder puts on your mind. I want to be able to go outside and not compare my body to other people's and I want to be able to deal with stress. So for me recovery means living free physically and mentally from the eating disorder which is something I'm still working towards and something that I've accepted I probably won't reach for a very long time, but I do have hope that I eventually will. Let's cut the tag out. I'm not going to show the number because it doesn't matter. on now forever.